Hi friends, Doug Batchelor here. I thought it was important to come back in the studio and give a little prophecy update because there have been some new recent developments. You may have heard that on May 23rd this year, this is 2015, that there was a special group called the John 17 Movement that gathered in Phoenix, religious leaders from the Catholic Church, evangelical churches, apostolic churches, and they received another personal message from the Pope encouraging Christian unity. Now I'd like for you to hear, we can't play the whole eight minutes of the message, but I wanna just give you a couple of excerpts of the message that the Pope sent to evangelical and Catholic Christians in North America. Queridos hermanos, la desunión es una herida en el cuerpo de la Iglesia de Cristo. Y nosotros no queremos que esa herida permanezca. Okay. You notice right away he begins to talk about that the division that exists among Christians is a wound in the body of Christ. Very specifically notice that he says the division that exists among Christians is a wound. This reminds me of the verse, verses, I should say, you find in Revelation 13 regarding the beast. Revelation 13, 3. And I saw one of the heads as it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled or wondered after the beast. Revelation 13, 12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and he causes the earth, this is the second beast of the US, he causes the earth and those that dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And then you go to verse 14. He deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and he lived. So here it talks about this wound and so it caught my attention when you have the leader of the Catholic Church, a Jesuit Pope, appealing to evangelical and Catholic Christians in North America to unite saying that this division between our churches is a wound in the body of Christ that needs to be healed. Well, the Bible says that wound was caused by the sword. And the Bible is very clear. It says in Ephesians chapter six that the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, uh, the Bible tells us in Hebrews four, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and that sword divides. Jesus said, think not that I'm come to send peace, but I came to send a sword. The message of Christ will sometimes bring division in a family, and this is what happened to Christianity. So we know that in prophecy in the last days, there's going to be an appeal that we disregard, that we downplay the teachings of the word in preference for unity. And there's gonna be a crisis that is gonna make a lot of these divided churches want to come together. I don't think anybody is left to wonder who is gonna be the central figure that will be the cheerleader for this unity it's gonna be the Pope. He's easily recognized right now as the spiritual leader of the Christian church by both Protestants and Catholics. I'm gonna play a little more of this video for you. La desunión es obra del padre de la mentira, del padre de la discordia, que siempre busca que los hermanos estén divididos. So here he's saying that this division that uh, separates the two is from the devil. Well. In a sense, I agree. I think it's the falsehoods, it's the false doctrines, it's the lies that have come in. The Bible talks about doctrines of devils that has brought in this discord. But uh, it's also very convenient to say that the separation is of the devil and let's just unite for the sake of unity at the expense of truth. And that's the message we're gonna be hearing more of in the last days. It's the devil that's dividing us. And if there's a group that stands up and says, we cannot unite uh, in spite of the crises that we see in the world today. We're going to be called diabolical. Hoy reunidos, yo desde Roma y ustedes allí. Oh, I want to stop that right there. For me, I'm just looking at a global picture. The Pope is sitting in his office in the Vatican, leader of the first power in Revelation 13. And he's saying, I am now addressing you over there, 
speaking to a group of mostly Protestant with some Catholic leaders in North America, and it just seems like a fulfillment of that prediction that there would be a reaching across the abyss between these two powers. And so he says, I here in Rome, you there in America, we need to unite. Sounds to me like echoes of prophecy. Pediremos para que el Padre envíe el Espíritu de Jesús, el Espíritu Santo, y nos dé la gracia de que todos sean uno, para que el mundo crea. So, as you listen to this, you're going to find this is the strongest appeal for unity that I've heard coming from the Vatican thus far. Y me viene a la mente decir algo que puede ser una insensatez. O quizás una herejía, no sé. I don't know about you, friends, but when I hear the Pope say in advance, I'm about to say something that might be controversial or perhaps even heretical. I usually sit up, I want to know what is the Pope going to say that even he admits might be heretical. Pero hay alguien que sabe que pese a las diferencias somos uno. Y es el que nos persigue. So here he's saying, there's someone who knows we're one and he's persecuting us. It's the devil who's causing this persecution. Now the Pope is beginning to allude to Christians that are being killed simply because they're Christians, most of which is happening because of the conflict with Islam and ISIS in particular. And these things may be accelerating, probably will, in the days ahead. El que persigue hoy día a los cristianos que nos unge con el martirio, sabe que los cristianos son discípulos de Cristo. So again, the Pope is saying here that the devil is anointing Christians with uh, martyrdom. And I think as you see terrorism increase in, in incidents of Christians being persecuted and killed and beheaded, uh, by the growing and mounting uh, controversy between Islam, or at least radical Islam, and Christianity, this is going to have a polarizing influence for Christians. And the Pope is setting himself at the middle of that right now, calling Christians to unite under the banner of Catholicism to resist this persecution of Christians globally. Que son uno, que son hermanos. No le interesa si son evangélicos, ortodoxos, luteranos, católicos, apostólicos, no le interesa, son cristianos. So you notice, this is really amazing that the Pope is saying, it doesn't matter whether you're orthodox, apostolic, Lutheran, evangelical, uh, Catholic, that, that the devil views all Christians as just one enemy. And so since he views it that way, we need to just come together and to set aside our doctrinal differences and be united since we're going to be baptized by this common baptism of persecution and martyrdom. This sort of paints a picture of what we can expect in the future. I think that uh, there's more in prophecy than we may have understood regarding a conflict between Christianity and Islam in the days ahead and that this is gonna have um, a a polarizing influence on Christians. That, along with other natural or financial disasters, the world's going to be shaken and everybody's going to run to the uh, leader of the Catholic Church as the spiritual leader. Y esa sangre se junta. Hoy estamos viviendo, queridos hermanos, el ecumenismo de la sangre. He speaks here now about an ecumenism of blood. The, the video actually goes eight minutes, and we've just taken this section. You can go look for yourself at the John 17 Movement site where they've got the entire video. But I just wanted to highlight what I thought were some very thought-provoking points that are being made. And I think much of the Christian world is just missing this. It's just going by, and they don't realize the language that the Pope is using is language drawn right out of Revelation. Not only the Pope, where he's referencing the wound. But if you look in the material that's at the John 17 Movement website, 
They say the church which is described as the family of God remains divided. The attitudes and harsh judgments among professed Christians have caused deep wounds and centuries of conflict. Yeah, that was called the Protestant Reformation. And uh, it's just being suggested we should roll all of that back, forget what the doctrinal issues are that brought the separation, and just unite as one loving family. Sounds good, sounds appealing. And I know I'll probably get some criticism for taking the approach that not all unity is good. But uh, with the backdrop of what we see happening soon, the Pope is going to be making a historic visit to the United States. Here he is directly appealing for unity among Christians, Catholics, and Protestants in the US. He's scheduled to be meeting with the president. He's going to address the United Nations. I bet something will be said about Islam and some of these battles with uh, ISIS. Uh, he's been invited to address the joint session of Congress. And the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, could barely contain his enthusiasm when he realized His Holiness, the Pope, was going to come and address the political machine of the United States. Uh, they would not invite any other pastor to do that. So obviously the Pope is more than just a pastor. He is a political religious dynamo in the world today. And the central reason that he was coming was to go to Philadelphia and meet with religious leaders from all denominations on the importance of the family, the special conference on the family. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if in the context of that meeting they don't talk about how important it is for families to come together on Sunday to worship and to develop relationships. So friends, you might be wondering, why does Amazing Facts do these prophecy updates? Is knowing the day and the hour of the Lord gonna save anybody? No, there's, there's lots of things that are happening. We can see prophecy being fulfilled all the time. We're getting very close to the Lord's coming. But what are you waiting for? Uh, are you waiting to know a little more? Are you waiting until you can time it to the very end, like filing your taxes at the last moment? If you've not made a complete surrender to Jesus, there's no better time than right now. If you're waiting for that to be convenient, there's just some obstacle, and when your family life gets easier, then you're gonna make a complete surrender. Friends, I can tell you the devil will see to it that it is never convenient. He'll always have some better time in the future so you can procrastinate. I'd like to appeal to you that if you do believe Jesus is coming and you have not yet made a complete surrender, do that right now. Today is the time. Now is the appointed time of salvation. Just invite Jesus into your heart and say, Lord, I don't even know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna trust you with my life. Please forgive my sins. Give me a new heart. Give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. Would you like to do that right now, friends? That's how you get ready for the final events. Could I pray with you as we close this segment? Father in heaven, I don't know what's happening in the lives and hearts of those who may be watching, but we do see we're living on the threshold of eternity. Prophetic events are fulfilling around us. And I just pray that we can completely surrender our lives to you. If there is some sin or obstacle that's kept us chained to the enemy, break those chains and set us free. Help us to invite Jesus in our hearts and as his light comes in that he might dispel the darkness. Give us peace that when we come to you and surrender that you will then give us power to be new creatures. Bless every person with that gift of eternal life and then help us to consecrate our time and our lives and our means to serving you. And be ready for that day because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. With that, friends, we'd like to just encourage you to stay connected to Amazing Facts and keep tuned in. As often as necessary, we'll try and give you updates. And let's all be praying together. We can work for Jesus and represent him.